In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get set up with the new function calling feature within OpenAI's API in Node.js. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is go ahead to the OpenAI website and grab an API key. Once you have that set up, just go ahead and put it in your .env within your root directory. Now, once you have that, we're going to go ahead and npm init-y. So that will give us a package within the left side in our VS code. And then we're just going to go ahead and npm install two packages, Axios and .env. So we're going to be using Axios to make our request and .env to store our variable here. So once you have that, just go ahead and save your .env. You can close that out. So from there, just go ahead and touch an index.js or make an index.js just within your VS code over here. And then the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be importing our Axios module. So Axios, if you're not familiar, is very similar to fetch. You could also use fetch uh, if you'd like to not have an extra dependency, but just be mindful, you will have to be on a newer version of node for that. Then .env, that's just how we reach into our environment variable. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to establish a couple example functions. So the way that I'm structuring this is we're going to have two functions and one function is dependent on the other. So you'll see that in just a second here. So our first function, we're going to be getting the weather. Now this sort of simulates an API request. So if you'd like to go ahead and actually swap this out for a weather API, you could very well go ahead and do that. So it's going to take in a location and it's going to take in a unit and we're going to default the unit to Fahrenheit if one isn't necessarily specified. And then the response is going to be the location and then we're going to have a hard coded value here. So the thing with this to keep in mind is like, you have to sort of think of it as if it's an API. So in the example, it's just hard coded, but the purpose of this video is really just to show you how to chain these things together and get going with the functions API in general. So the next one is going to be the function that's dependent on our first function. So it takes in the temperature as an argument and that temperature isn't generated until this function is called. So I'm going to be showing you how to have successive function calls and chain those commands within your OpenAI request. So you'll see within here, we're just going to log out calling our get clothing recommendation. We're going to show you the temperature and then we're going to have a simple uh, sort of uh, switch, almost like a Boolean. So it's like if the temperature is below 60, we're going to say, okay, you're going to wear warm col uh, clothing, colorful or uh, light uh, clothing tie dye. So just sort of, you could put anything in here again, is really just to demonstrate the purpose of the new functions feature. So within that, we're just going to then simply return the recommendation. So within here, this is our main sort of function loop. So you can sort of think of these as like utility functions. So if you have core logic, say you have an API, like say you're reaching for news and then with that news, you want to do something else. You could sort of swap out these, you know, variable names and the logic within it. So within the run conversation, the first thing I'm going to do is specify the base URL. So the reason why I'm not using the OpenAI wrapper is at time of starting this tutorial yesterday, the new features within uh, the new function API uh, weren't yet available within at least the Node.js wrapper. So that could change at time of viewing, but when I tried, it didn't work. So I'm just going straight to their API directly. So next we're going to specify our headers. This is going to be where we pass in our API key. Then this is the crucial part. So this is sort of the context of how the model will know what the functions are and what the arguments are, and you can input their description with natural language. So just to sort of dive into it. So this is your message as you usually would send with say, if you've used GPT-3, GPT-3.5 or GPT-4. Now the new part, is both the model number. So make sure you're on this new model. Um, but more importantly is the function structure itself. So 
Uh, this is an example that they gave in their Python example. So I went ahead and converted this function at least. I thought it was a good example to illustrate uh, this new functionality. And it's good because it shows a function that takes in a number of different parameters. So you see here, there's it's taking in the string of the location and the description is the city and state. Similar for unit, it's taking in an enum, Celsius or Fahrenheit. So, and then you can also specify, okay, the location is required for this function. So once you have that, we have our get clothing recommendations and you can be as verbose as you want in these descriptions. And again, you're just setting in the arguments. You can also have functions that don't take in any arguments. If say you just wanna invoke a function uh, based on something you're doing within the code, you can also do that. So that's sort of the base structure of what is new with what you pass into the API. And one thing that I have noticed is it doesn't actually seem like this uh, is factored into your token count, which is great. So you can imagine if you have a ton of different functions, I haven't really pushed the limits on seeing how many you could pass in here, but I would be curious just to confirm that these functions aren't actually taking up uh, token space. So if you're, if you know, just leave a comment below and let the rest of us know. And then we're also just going to be specifying the function call and that it's going to be calling, uh, in the auto scenario. So they're going to, it's going to continually be invoked until there's no functions within the queue. Essentially we'll sort of go into that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our try, uh, catch. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to send our initial requests to OpenAI. So we're going to set up our data and headers and everything like we went through. And then I'm just going to revisit our message. So I'm going to say, what is the weather like in Boston in Fahrenheit based on the temperature? What should I wear? So it's sort of leading it in a way, okay, I need to know what to wear and what the temperature is and you'll see how they're successive as we go through this, successively called that is. So the next thing that we're gonna do is, so I set up this hash map essentially to prevent unnecessary invocations of the functions. So I noticed when I first set this up that sometimes OpenAI was invoking the function more than once. So if there's something where you don't want the function and you can essentially cache it for the conversation, you can use this. Now, one thing to note with this is if you are using a function that you might be calling continuously within a conversation, you will have to edit this logic. But for this purpose, for demonstration's sake, this should, um, well, this will work in this example or similar examples. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to establish a couple conditions. So now within the message, uh, we're going to see, we're just going to check if there is a function call and if the response doesn't have the finish reason of stop. So one thing I encourage is as you're going through this, if you do want to console log out all the requests or the payloads, it is very helpful to see what's being sent, uh, what's being appended within the conversation, and then also what's uh, within the response. So I have omitted that, but if you want to go in and uh, write the responses locally or save them in a database or just console or, you know, mail, put them to your terminal. Feel free to do that. I found it helpful in developing this. So from there, we're going to get our message and we're going to uh, put our function name here for where we're going to uh, reference it a couple times. So we're going to break the loop if the function's already executed. So again, just so we don't have those multiple invocations of the functions. Um, but like I said, if you need multiple invocations of your function, you will just have to tweak this one little piece here. So from there, let me just bring up some code here. So from here, we're going to have a switch case just based on our function. So if you scale this out to say three, four or five functions, you can add to your switch case. You could also have some, you know, another sort of 
uh, way to, you know, if you want to have a if statement or so, some sort of hash map that you sort through to do this, there's multiple ways to do this, but um, this is the way that I chose to handle the log logic. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to first parse the argument uh, within our get current weather. So the one thing that was interesting is within our um, weather args here is the arguments is a string of an object. So I thought that was sort of interesting uh, when I got down to this to see that this was actually wrapped in a string here. So if you're wondering what that is, uh, that's why. So we're just formatting that string uh, into a parsable uh, uh, sort of uh, format for our application and then from there we're going to be passing into our get current weather our location and our unit then uh, similarly for the get clothing recommendations we're going to be parsing it and then we're just going to be passing in the temperature and then if you for whatever reason like say if you'd established a function within here uh, but you actually forgot to put it within the switch case, we'll have an error there that will log. So here we're going to be adding the function to the executed function list. So again, this is the piece of logic for making sure that it isn't inv invocating multiple times, but tweak this as you need. Okay, so next we're going to be appending the function response to the message list. So this is another new thing is there is a role of function. So you have user assistant, uh, system and function, and we're going to be essentially having our question. And then as the functions are getting answered, they're going to go in that queue that gets sent back. So OpenAI's API has the context of the answers of the functions uh, within the proper format. So it's not continually reaching out and saying, you know, this function needs to be called and we need an answer, et cetera. So from there, we're going to make another API request uh, with our updated message list, like I just went through and we'll be logging out a handful of these things. So you'll be able to see everything, how it runs once we're complete here. And then from here, we're just at the end of our loop. We're going to just be logging out the final response here. So we just have some simple error handling. This will be all on Git if you do want to take a look. Then we're going to run our conversation. We're going to log out the final answer. And then finally, if we have any errors, we're going to log out the errors. So the one thing I do want to note with this, so this example has successive calls, but in a lot of cases, you don't necessarily need to have functions that are dependent on another function, obviously. So if you just wanted to specify a number of functions and then within your prompt, you want to say like, get a quote, get the news, get the temperature. You can do that all within one, um, uh, one message and answer series instead of doing this sort of like, you know, piggybacking sort of agent-like behavior. So one thing to play around with, I didn't do that in this example. I figured I'd sort of dive in with a bit more of a advanced example, and you can sort of dial this back as you need. So from there, we can just go ahead and actually call our index and we'll see, okay, we're sending the initial request to open AI, then we're calling the get current weather with the location of Boston MA. And if I just go back and actually we have it right here. So again, this is our question. We're specifying Fahrenheit. We see, okay, so it's, it's grabbing those. It knows that those are the arguments. It's sending that response back uh, once it has it to open AI. And then once it has that knowledge essentially, it's going to go ahead and recognize, okay, now it needs to get the clothing recommendations because it has the temperature and it can proceed from there. Then finally, it's sending that clothing recommendation response and then it sort of gives you your summary. So you can say the clothing weather in Boston is 76 degrees. Uh, it's forecasted to be sunny and windy. 
based on the temperature, I would recommend wearing light clothing. So just to sort of illustrate this, if we go back to our logic here, and let's just say, let's just change this to 30 and try and call this again. So again, we see the temperature is 30 and then based on that 30 degrees, uh, it will say, okay, it wants to give you some colorful clothing, right? And you can play around with this. Obviously it's gonna be more useful depending on your application. I just wanted to do a simple example to get you up and running in Node.js. So if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.